These are notes for section 8.6. We're doing word problems today. <clears throat> so page 473, only six problems, 1, 5, 9, 13, 19, and 21. So I think we can see one and five there. Nine. And let's see, 13, 19, 21. So 13. Yeah, that is 13. This is on page 475, 19, 1, 8, 6, 1, 5, you should be able to see. Okay. Number one, one number is three times another. The sum of their reciprocals is 20 over three. Find the numbers. Okay, so the numbers are X and three X. The reciprocals are one over X and one over three X. The sum is 20 over three. So this is the setup. One over X plus one over three X sum 20 over three. Multiply both sides by three X. Three X times X is three. Three X times one over three X is one. And so three 20 X. Four equals 20 X. X is equal to one fifth. So the smaller number is one fifth. Three times that is three fifths, so the numbers are one fifth and three fifths. <clears throat> Number five, the sum of the reciprocals of two consecutive integers is seven over 12, finding two integers. Okay, you might recall consecutive integers are x and x plus one, and then we're going to take the reciprocals and add them up. So x and x plus one, the sum of the reciprocals is one over x plus one over x plus one. And that comes out to be 7 over 12. <laughs> Multiply by the common denominator 12x, x plus 1. So here x cancels out 12 times x plus 1. x plus 1 cancels out 12x. 12 cancels out 7x times x plus 1. Distribute 12x plus 12 plus 12x equals 7x squared plus 7x. Combine like terms 24x plus 12 equals 7x squared plus 7x. Subtract 24x on both sides, subtract 12 on both sides. Zero equals 7x squared minus 17x minus 12. This factors into 7x plus 4x minus 3. So that means 7x plus 4 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. If you work this out, x is equal to negative 4 7 which is not allowed since the original problem says we're only supposed to have integers. Integers are 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 plus or minus 3, no fractions. No decimal, so this is out. X is three. And therefore the next number is four. So the solution is three and four is what we want. Okay, then the next one I'm gonna show you was problem number nine. You have to use a formula distance equals rate times time. Okay, so for problem number nine. The speed of a boat in still water is five miles per hour. So the boat travels three miles downstream in the same amount of time as it takes to travel 1.5 miles upstream. What is the speed of the current? Okay, and we're asked to solve all the information here and make a little chart. So I made a chart here. So distance is equal to rate times time. 
simple example is that if you drive 60 miles an hour for three hours, 60 times three is 180, you've gone 180 miles. If I divide both sides by R, that means time is distance divided by rate. So I've got that. Okay, now it says um, the boat can go five miles an hour. The current, we don't know, call it X. So if I'm going with the current, I'm being helped by the current, five plus X. I'm going against the current, five minus X. And then the distance, it says upstream was 1.5 miles and downstream was three miles. Now time is distance divided by rate. So distance divided by rate, 1.5 over five minus X. Distance divided by rate is three over five plus X. Okay, where X is the speed of the current. Now it said the same time upstream and downstream, so I set these two equal to each other. 1.5 over 5 minus x equals 3 over 5 plus x, because it's at the same time. Then I do the cross multiply root, that times that, 1.5 times 5 plus x is equal to that times that, 3 times 5 minus x. Distribute 7.5 plus 1.5 x equals 15 minus 3x. Add 3x to both sides, subtract 7.5 on both sides, so we get 4.5x equals 7.5, divided by 4.5, x is equal to 75 over 45, which reduces to 1 and 2 thirds miles per hour, or 1.6 repeating miles per hour is the speed of the current. Okay. Problem number 13, similar theme. Train A has a speed of 15 miles per hour greater than that of train B. Train A travels 150 miles <clears throat> in the same time that train B travels 120 miles. So those are distances. Okay? So we already know train A, 150 goes here and 120 goes here for train B. Okay? What are the speeds of the two trains? All right. All right, so 150, 120. We are told that train A goes 15 miles an hour faster. So if I call the, dis the speed of B, train B, X, then train A has to be X plus 15. And just like over here, time is distance divided by rate. So distance divided by, by rate, 150 over X plus 15. Distance divided by rate, 120 over X. And since it says the same time, we set them equal. Cross multiply, 150 times X equals 120 times X plus 15. Distribute 120 X plus 1800 is 150 X. Subtract 120x on both sides, 1800 equals 30x. Divide by 30, x is 60 miles an hour for train B. Train A is 15 miles an hour faster, so it's 75 miles an hour for train A. <coughs> and then 19, work problems. A water tank can be filled by an inland pipe in eight hours. It takes twice that long, that means 16 hours, for the outlet pipe to empty the tank. How long will it take to fill if both pipes are open, okay? So eight hours to fill, twice as long, which means 16 hours to empty. So eight hours to fill, 16 hours to empty. Let X be the total time to fill. So consider what happens in one hour. In one hour, one eighth of the tank would fill, but one sixteenth would empty. Okay? By the same logic, we would have one over X completely filled. Okay? So one over eight minus one over 16, this is coming in, this is going out, and that's equal to 1 over x. You multiply both sides by 16x to clear out the fractions. 2x minus x is equal to 16, so x is equal to 16 hours. Okay, so this is section 8.6.